On the 20th of November 1967, India launched the Rohini 75. Its first indigenous rocket, which also marked the beginning of the Indian space program. More than half a century later, and several launches later, India's private space sector is set to achieve a similar feat. Space tech startup Skyroot Aerospace is set to lift off the country's first privately developed rocket into space. It's called Vikram S. The launch will be historic simply because space exploration in India has so far been the domain of the public sector with the Indian Space Research Organization leading the development, design and launch of the space missions. Vikram S will break that wheel. Its launch will be a reflection of the boom in India's private space sector. And for all you know, it could further lead to India's own SpaceX type ventures. How exactly? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I am Molly Gambhir. The Indian space industry is in transit. From being government run for decades, it is now opening up to private players. The process has been underway for over two years. In 2020, the government introduced a slew of reforms to boost private participation in the sector. Chief among the reforms was the establishment of InSpace, the Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center. What exactly is this body? It is a single window autonomous agency that acts as a link between the Indian Space Research Organization and private companies in the space sector. The aim of this body is to harness the huge untapped potential that exists in India vis-a-vis -vis space research and exploration. And with this in mind, India opened up the space sector to private companies. In space is responsible for boosting their participation. The launch of Vikram S is a direct result of this initiative. The rocket is developed by Hyderabad based Skyroot Aerospace. It is named after Vikram Sarabhai, the father of the Indian space program. But what exactly is it? Well, Vikram S is essentially a small lift launch vehicle. It is part of a mission called Praramb or beginning. This mission will carry three payloads to space. It will be a suborbital flight, like the ones undertaken by Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson. The flight will validate the technologies part of this mission. Is this mission one of its kind? Not really. There is another. It is called the Agni Let, a 3D printed rocket engine developed by space tech startup Agni Kul Cosmos. Last week, it was successfully test-fired at the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. It was a major milestone for India's space ambitions. Agni Let is the world's first 3D printed rocket engine. It has been designed and manufactured entirely in India. The test launch has only validated India's capabilities. It has also set the stage for similar future missions by private players. You see, these two missions are not the only ones. There are a host of other space tech startups that are looking to launch their own missions and propel the growth of India's space tech ecosystem. To start with, we have Bellatrix Aerospace. It recently announced it will be investing $76 million to set up a manufacturing wing in Bengaluru. And then we have Digantra, which translates to space in Sanskrit. It is India's first private space company that is ready to send 40 satellites to clean up space junk. The Gantra has also launched what is arguably the world's first commercial space-based weather system. Its technology is kind of like Google Maps for space. Next, we have Dhruva Space, another private space tech startup which is developing small satellites in the commercial, governmental, and academic markets. And the list does not end there. Besides these major ones, there are other startups as well that are looking to fire up India's space ambitions, like Satshore, Pixel, Astrogate Labs, ePlane, Galaxy Eye. Given the pace at which India's private space sector is expanding, experts say launching a satellite to space in India 
could soon become as easy as booking a cab online. I'm not kidding here. Analysts predict India's space tech industry to grow at a rate of 6% each year. And this will be across all domains. Satellite manufacturing, ground segments, launch services, R&D. Which brings me to another question. How much is the sector currently worth? Around $9.6 billion. According to a survey, if we keep going at the current pace, then by 2025, this value could touch $12.8 billion. Next question. How exactly will this benefit India? Well, it could help India emerge as the go-to destination in the global space market. And the argument is not far-fetched. Just have a look at how the market is currently faring. After the United States, China and Russia were the biggest space giants until now. Both are now seen as unreliable collaborators in a way. China, because of its notorious activities that are amplifying the space junk menace. And Russia, because of its actions in Ukraine, they are impeding global trust in Moscow. And this puts India in a unique position. It has the right capabilities, the ability to do business, and the right mix of talent and infrastructure. If India wants, it can emerge as the next big space market. But that will not be an easy feat. Today, the global space economy is worth $469 billion. And do you know how much India's share is in this? Just 2%. And that's according to India's own estimates. And look at how much India spends on space programs. According to Statista, the United States allotted $54 billion for its space budget. China was on the second spot with $10 billion. France came third with $3.95 billion, followed by Russia at $3.57 billion, Japan at $4.21 billion, Germany at $2.38 billion, and India was on the seventh spot with just $1.96 billion spent on space programs. What does this tell you? New Delhi still has a long ladder to climb when it comes to global competitiveness. The privatization of the space market is by far the biggest step in this direction. This privatization drive in the space sector will add new dynamism to India's ambitions. It will help India leapfrog to the next stage of space exploration. The foundation has been laid. The first big steps have been taken. The way forward will be defined by the kind of risks that India is willing to take.